Hello and welcome to Video Game News. I am your host, Mad Cat. This series is dedicated to discussing video game news for all platforms, including PC, Mac, Linux, console, and mobile development. We'll look at the news of the previous week where I will provide you analysis of my viewpoints as well as a commentary therein. So let's go ahead and get started today. Valve reveals their new family share plan. Now this is a big monumental thing for Steam because it's going to allow people to share their libraries with their friends and family. The great thing about this is that you can do it up to 10 different devices. So maybe you have two or three different computers, you want to be able to play your games anywhere at any time, fantastic. But you can also give it to your friends and family and they can play your library. The great thing about this is that they can keep their own saves and they basically are downloading the data to their own computer and they can earn their own achievements. This does come with a couple of drawbacks though, but I think that they're very agreeable that you cannot download DLCs for a game that someone else owns. You can play someone's library, but if for any reason they want to play their own library, it's going to kick you off. Now the good thing about that is it's going to give you a couple of minutes warning of saying, hey, um, the original owner is playing one of his games, you need to get off within the next few minutes. And the other major drawback with this is that all the Steam games are not going to be eligible for being shared. This is mostly for anything that has a CD key. So it's very big news and I'm very happy for Steam. I know that Microsoft has tried and been exploring something like this for their Xbox One, but I think it's more important that Steam gets something like this forward. I'm a very big supporter of Steam, so I look forward to sharing this with my friends and family. Zynga is in the news last week where they resolve a data theft incident. One of their former executive officers left the company and in doing so took a couple of files with him. Now when I say a couple, I mean 760 files. Now when I say took with them, I mean he put it on Dropbox. Now any system administrator worth their salt in the IT world is going to notice that. And honestly, this executive, if he thought he could get away with this, he needs to get out of the technology field and do something like pass out peanuts at a ball game. Uh, good news from PayPal, they're adjusting their policies to allow crowdfunding to properly go through as a transaction. In the past, there was always difficulty with it and some uh, groups that earn money did not always get their money because of policies from PayPal. Now PayPal says that what will happen in instances of crowdfunding is that a senior executive is going to personally approve any of these transactions, hopefully making the process a little bit faster. I think this is more of a beginning for PayPal and we'll probably see a little bit more um, action done as far as this go to be a little bit more long lasting than just having someone approve all of the transactions. Chris Heckler sounds off the new indie program for the Xbox One. Now this is something that Sony has done already, but Microsoft will be doing it for the Xbox One. This will allow indie developers to go ahead and put their games on the Xbox market and will allow better representation of the indie market. Of course, the PC market has been doing this ever since its very existence, and things like Steam has been a big supporter of the indie development. But people seem to like consoles more than they like PC, so I'm happy that Xbox is doing something like this because indie developers need more representation out there. 
especially since they are trying to provide a cross-platform capability amongst all of their devices, I think that this will be very beneficial to getting a lot of developers working on Microsoft products. Big news in Massachusetts. Um, a new bill is going to give a 25% tax credit that was previously for the movie industry to extend to the video game industry. Now, this is big news because that means that less money is going to be taken away in taxes from game studios so they can put more money into development. Now Massachusetts represents the fifth largest video game industry market in the country. And to quote, they employ around 1,300 people and contribute roughly around 1.8 billion in the state's revenue. And time for our one up. There we go our one up award of the week now this actually goes out to Incas games sorry if I'm mispronouncing that now they have developed the not necessarily the first but certainly the best visually impaired game this uses nothing but sounds to help people that are visually impaired to navigate through a game world now I believe that the first game is going to be an RPG and this is absolutely brilliant and I'm hoping that this is a great success because I definitely want to bring video games to everyone and not let a little thing like disability uh, stop them. Now while I'm not disabled like they are I certainly have my own disabilities and I can certainly feel for anyone that has trouble playing video games with any level of disability. So congratulations Incus Games on a great design and I look forward to see how well this works for you. Okay now we move on to my favorite segment and this being episode 2 I don't really have a favorite but it's one I talk about a lot. Gender and sexual issues in video games. In the news last week we had Naughty Dog they are the maker of Last of Us, which was a critically acclaimed game that did feature a strong female character. Now, Naughty Dog went on record at a convention stating that they believe that the industry is ready for more strong female characters that are non-sexualized in a primary role of a video game. He stated that AAA games have the capability of doing this but will likely not do it because there are so many different entities in making a video game that their major concern is making money and so they will choose the safe route. Now this has been a complaint of the industry for years because it makes it more difficult for there to be any innovation at all. They believe that it's the indie developers that really need to get in there and start making these kinds of games. And in doing so, we'll encourage the AAA titles to be like, hey, the indie games are having a success with this kind of topic. Why not go ahead and do it ourselves? So kudos to Naughty Dog, although I do find it all very ironic that Naughty Dog their name it's like something a guy says to another guy when he's like hey man I just slept with triplets oh man you naughty dog give it here man yeah and now we kick off our lightning round did you hear something hmm all right, so a lot of things for Microsoft starting off with unity will offer support for Xbox One in 2014. Original reports originally stated 2013, but they have since corrected that. Microsoft may allow developers early access to their games on consoles. Now this is pretty exciting for the Xbox One, given that indie developers can start putting their games on there. Nothing is confirmed yet, but it's very exciting stuff. 
Now we move on to our Bonehead Award of the Week. I have no sound graphic for this. I really don't know what to do. I thought about maybe doing the uh, Captain Caveman Ongo Bongo, but I'm sure YouTube would criticize me for copyright infringement even if I gave them proper credit. So I'm in the market for a little sound bite here. If you got a suggestion, put it in the comments below. Fox News. I don't know what it is about Fox News, but they make it so easy for me. Not only has Fox News been awarded the Bonehead of the Week award, but for the first time ever, they've done it for two separate issues about the same exact thing. Mark this day in your calendars, boys and girls. Although with Fox News, I'm sure it won't be the last time. So starting off, they had a two-part series about the bad influence of video games. More specifically, violent video games. Now they of course tried to link the last 10 years, all of the bad shootings that's happened and tried to link them to video games. Now the people that were speaking were doc uh, psychiatrist Dr. Paul Weigel, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, Iowa State University professor Dr. Douglas Gentile, associate professor of psychology at the University of Missouri, Bruce Bathalo, yeah, I think that's it. And American Psychological Association Society of Media Psychology and Technology. <sighs> to uh, uh, long uh, uh, of uh, title. Dr. Phyllis Koch Shiraz. <laughs> No, not that she was. Now, of course, they were all very one-sided on the issue and they didn't take into account availability of firearms or their mental instability. They also used the example of some kid who did a school shooting and he citing, oh, well, you know, he played Doom and whenever he shoots people in Doom, they usually get right back up. I kind of call bullshit on that one because that sounds like he was coached a little bit to say that. I've played Doom and yeah there's multiplayer to Doom but when you kill someone in Doom they do what we call respawn which means they go back to the start point and they come back into the match. If they just rose up from the dead exactly where they're at then people would do something we call camping, where they'll just stay there and keep killing you the moment you resurrect. This would be a very bad design. I kind of call shenanigans on, oh, well, I played Doom and that's how I saw it in Doom, so I figured that happens in real life. The second segment that Fox produced was by Dr. Keith Ablo. And he talks about the game warning labels on Fox and Friends. Now, in a segment linked between teen killers and violent video games, he states that every killer involved in mass shootings were obsessed with video games. He goes on further to state that many medical professionals have confirmed that there is a link between violent video games and violent children. However, there has been no research paper, no scientific article that has made that assertion. That hasn't been later criticized and like, uh, no, your findings were all wrong. They're often deceptive in how they do these findings, so it's oftentimes you have to read between the lines. It's like, how did you arrive at this information? He also goes on to say that video games are basically a drug. And, I mean, like heroin, or like cocaine, that people play these games because they get high off of them and then it causes them to do violent actions. Now look, school shootings are a very real thing. They're very scary and it's a very sad thing that they happen. However, it's been proven time and time again that they were violent individuals video games would be nothing more than an enabler but they would probably find their violent outlet in other ways 
video game was not the thing that set them off and that they were disturbed individuals to begin with. And never once have I heard any report, except if it's on Fox News, of the person saying, you know what, I was a calm, peaceful person, and then I played Grand Theft Auto, and all of a sudden, I just had to hit up, uh, I had to steal a vehicle, run over some hookers, get three stars so the cops would start chasing me, and then pull out my Uzi and shoot down a helicopter. I have never heard that. Most people have an ulterior motive for the school shootings which has nothing to do with video games. I argue that if violent video games have such a drastic effect on children, then why do we not see more school shootings? Why is this not more commonplace? Why is it every week we're seeing something? If these psychologists and scientists are correct, then this should be something that happens often. And yet, more often than not, it's something that happens rarely. I mean, it happens enough for there to be a news coverage on it. To me, video games are not the issue. To me, it comes down to the parents and the parents need to take responsibility for their children and I've seen a lot of parents who are just like you know what our child is very mean and aggressive and we just let them be they'll work it out for themselves but then if something happens it's like well we knew we shouldn't let him play video games but we didn't think there was any harm and they just made him violent bullshit what made him violent wasn't the video games, is that you didn't go and tell him, hey, by the way, these video games are not an example of reality. You can't just kill someone and they magically reappear alive. Now, most kids will say, yeah, yeah, mom, I know, I'm busy playing. But to those kids that need the extra attention, and parents, you know if your child needs extra attention, they'll be like, yeah, whatever. And it's like, no, you need to understand this right now that you can't go around killing people and there are consequences to your actions so that's it this week for video game news um, it's come in next week where we'll review this past week hopefully I'll get it out to you Wednesday fingers crossed um, beyond that happy gaming <laughs>